Hello everyone, welcome to this video about how to interpret chest x-rays. In this video we're gonna focus on the alphabetical method which goes A through I. There are some ad advantages and some disadvantages of using this method. Some of the advantages are that it's very easy to remember. No points are going to be overlooked. But it doesn't focus on what's most important and people tend to use more time on some of the points that should just be looked over quite quickly. Before we start with the main assessment, we always have to identify that we have the correct patient, we have to assess what projections we're looking at, and we have to assess the quality of the picture. We usually take two different projections for a chest x-ray examination. The first and main one is the posterior anterior projection where we shoot x-rays through the back of the patient and we measure it from the front. This is usually taken together with the lateral view x-ray. Again, these two projections make up what the normal x-ray examination of the chest is. Alternatively, we can take an anterior posterior projection. This is more commonly done if the patient is bedridden or if the patient is in isolation where we have to uh, bring a portable x-ray machine. What's important to know with this, uh, this projection is that the heart is usually magnified so if you're not aware of it, it can lead to the misdiagnosis of enlarged heart. Then we have to assess the quality of the projection. The first thing we do when assessing the quality of the projection is that we have to see if we have the entire thoracic cage visualized. To see the entire Jurassic Age, we have to see both the sinuses here at the bottom, also called the costophrenic angles. We have to be able to see the uh, first ribs at the top and some of the soft tissues on the side of the thoracic cage. Also, we don't want to see too much of the abdomen, only a small part about at the bottom. If, if we have too much of the abdomen, we see less of the lungs and that leads to that we can uh, overlook some important pathological changes. Then we have to assess if we have the correct rotation. The x-ray should be taken as straight on as possible. In order to assess the rotation, you can look at the spinous processes of the vertebrae. Also, you can look at between the two claviculi the spinous process that lies approximately in the middle of the two claviculi, it should be also approximately the same distance towards each of the claviculi. If it goes more towards one side, it can be a sign of scoliosis, or it can be a sign that we have the wrong rotation. Then we have to assess the inspiration. In order to assess the inspiration, we can do two methods. The first is that we can count the different ribs. We should be able to see at least nine of these ribs for the, the lungs to be inspired sufficiently. Alternatively, you can look at the posterior parts of the ribs and the mid clavicular line. If the fifth, the sixth, or the seventh rib penetrate diaphragm at the mid clavicular line, we can say that the inspiration is sufficient. What's important is that if we don't have a fully inspired lung or a sufficiently inspired lung, we can see less of the lung and that can also lead that we can miss some important changes. Lastly, just think of the general thoughts. How do you feel about the picture quality? Is the quality sufficient? Can you see what you want to see? And in a good enough resolution. Then we start with the main assessment. First, we start with A for airways. This is a quite uh, quick step. You look at the trachea here and the main bronchi, how they divide up. The trachea should be approximately in the middle of the mediastinum. It usually goes a little bit towards the right lung, but it should be approximately in the middle. If the uh, trachea or the bronchi is misplaced, as you can see in this picture. Before we go on, try to see 
what to, if you can find the cause of the misplacement. Pause the video if you want. In this case, it is due to a pneumothorax that is pushing the lungs towards the right. So that means that it also pushes the trachea and the bronchi more towards the right. Other causes of the misplacement of the trachea and the bronchi could be a mass, like a cancer in the mediastinum that is pushing directly on the trachea. Here you can see the difference between the normal x-ray on the left and the pathological on the right. It's not a huge difference, but you can clearly see that the trachea is misplaced towards the right of the, of the chest. Then we want to assess bones, B for bones. This is a step that should be quickly looked over unless you have a clinical suspicion of a fracture. You scan quickly for symmetry, fractures and lesions and you quickly evaluate the soft tissues on the side for any swelling, lesions and foreign bodies. In this picture you can clearly see some fractures of many of the ribs. The ribs are displaced towards, uh, the, towards uh, each, each part of the broken rib and you can see they already have started to form the callus. C stands for cardia or core, which means heart. The main thing to do about in this step is to assess the size of the heart. The heart should be about or less than 50% of the chest diameter on a posterior anterior projection. On the anterior proje posterior projections, it should be under 60%. In this case, the heart is approximately, I would say, 45% of the chest diameter. It's not important that we have the absolute per, uh, perfect percentage. It should just be approximately, so we can see if the chest is enlarged or not. In orange, we can see the outline of the left ventricle. And in green, we can see the right atrium. This is just a picture to show that we have a large heart taking approximately 75% of the width of the mediastinum. D stands for diaphragma. The first thing to check here is the two parts of the diaphragma called the hemi diaphragm. You have the one on the right, the one on the left. The one on the right should be a little bit uh, superior towards, uh, towards the lungs compared to the one on the left and this is due to the liver lying below pushing the diaphragm up. The diaphragm should also be uh, curved, which you can also see here on the lateral projection. This is a very useful uh, use of the lateral projection to assess the curve. If the curve is not there, and if it's flattened out, it usually means that we have the barrel chest. Barrel chest is a condition which occurs when the lungs are hyperexpanded. This is most commonly seen in severe emphysema which is most commonly also seen in severe COPD, when the patients are not able to expire fully. The earliest sign on an x-ray for barrel chest is the flattening of the diaphragma. This is again best viewed on the lateral image. On the posterior anterior picture, it is more flattened out, but it's, it still has some curve to it. E stands for effusions. Effusions mean that we're looking for pleural effusions, which means that we have accumulation of liquid in the lungs. These effusions, they may be large or they may be small. Uh, pleural effusions are abnormal accumulation of fluid in the lungs, and it may come from different causes like infections, heart insufficiency, or pulmonary hypertension. Large pleural effusions are usually very easy to see as they take up a huge port portion of the bottom part of the lung. The smaller ones are hard to see and the best way to see them is that they take up the parts of the sinuses here. Liquid shows up on x-rays as bright white and again the first signs of fusions are that the sinuses gradually disappears on the pictures. The sinuses, you can see them both on the posterior anterior picture and the lateral picture. These are the two sinuses you can see on the posterior anterior one. 
and on the latter one you can actually see three you can see both the posterior angles and one anterior angle when we have pleural fusion it can be again severe or it can be small the picture on the left here is drawn like how approximately the sinuses should have been shown but it's taken up by liquid on both sides on the right one uh, we have the left lung is unaffected by pleural effusion while the uh, right lung is quite severely affected where approximately 40% of the lung is taken up by effusion. F stands for fields or foreign bodies. Fields is one of the more important parts of the chest x-ray examination. You have to scan the whole peripheral part of the lung for any sign of pathologies. The vascular mar markings should go out to the periphery of each of the lungs. If it doesn't go out to the periphery, it's usually a sign of that we have a uh, pneumothorax. You can also stand for infiltrations during this part. A very common mistake is that we look at the scapula and we think that the scapula are lines for pneumothorax. Here it's drawn like this is the scapula lines. Here it's not drawn on so they can see that we have the lines more clearly. It's a very common beginner mistake that people think that these are uh, lines for pneumothorax, diagnose a patient with pneumothorax and really the patient is just fine. In this picture we have some other pathologies. See if you can see them. What we do have is a case of severe pneumothorax in this lung, where most of the lung is pushed towards the right. In this lung, the lung is affected by a small pneumothorax occupying the superior part of the pleural cavity and is pushing on the lungs. The problem with pneumothorax is that it leads to, first, it leads to compression of the lungs, making it hard to breathe. It also leads to compression of other structures in the chest and when a pneumothorax gets very large it gives a lot of pressure and when that pressure affects the heart too severely the heart is not able to pump blood out and that leads to shock so patient quickly dies. These are two more pathologies. See if you can see them first. What we do have here is two different examples of infiltrations. Infiltrations are more condensed parts of the lungs, where usually, which is typically an indication for any pathology. In this picture, we have two areas of infiltrations. We can't say exactly what causes the infiltration. It could be some cancer, some metastatic cancer. It could be some small a small infection but we do have some pathology in this lung the bottom part of the right lung is affected by uh, diffused inf infiltrations this is usually seen like if it takes like a whole lobe of the of the lung it's usually due to a pneumonia G stands for gastric bubble and great vessels the first thing you want to do here check the gastric bubble. Gastric bubble is uh, physiological, it should be there. It's an indicator that we have a standing picture, which is the most optimal picture. We also want to check the aortic knob and the pulmonary vessels, which we can see here. H stands for hilum and mediastinum. The first thing to do here is to evaluate the hilar regions for any masses or any lymphadenopathy. The highlight are typically visible and beginners very commonly mistake them for infiltrations or lymphadenopathy. It can be quite tricky to find out whether there is some small lymphadenopathy or not. Usually we need a actual, an actual radiologist to evaluate that if it's not clear. Uh, but be very careful on diagnosing a patient with uh, lymphadenopathy if you're not sure. 
We'll also check whether the mediastinum is widened or not. The mediastinum should be about 25% of the thoracic width. If it's more than that, it usually means that there is some mass in the middle that is pushing the mediastinum outwards. Here, I have drawn in normal, uh, normal highlight re regions. The reason why they are so visible, they're so white, is due to that this is the area where the main pulmonary vessels enter uh, back to the heart and leaves the heart. So it shows up as bright white. In this case, it's a severe lymphadenopathy affecting both sides of the lungs. You can see this, you have some small white areas. This is quite severely affected two areas. Uh, usually when you have uh, lymphadenopathy on both sides like this, it's going to be, you have to think of sarcoidosis. Lastly, we have I, which stands for impressions. This acts as a double check where you sit back, quickly look over the x-ray, see if you have missed anything, and just get a general impression. Is this a normal x-ray or is it a patho pathological x-ray? A last point, it's called a happy finder's bias. When someone finds something, they usually get so happy that they forget to look at the rest of the x-ray. This can lead to missing some important patho pathologies, so it's very important to keep in mind when you do find something, don't make the mistake to stop, scan over the rest of the lung, see if there there is something more, and if there isn't, then that uh, the first thing you saw is the conclusion. But of course you can see, uh, for instance, infiltrations and pleural effusions very commonly in the same picture. I hope you enjoyed, enjoyed this video, found it uh, educational, and I hope to see you again.